sadism. In any city, in any country, go into any mental institution or halfway house you can get into. As you enter, make sure you stride over to the clerk without any hesitance or fear in yourself and demand to see the one who calls herself the holder of sadism. If the clerk laughs, then running will not save you from the gruesome fate that now awaits you. If, however, the clerk raises an eyebrow at you and tells you that they have never even heard of this being, then grab them around the neck and hoist them from their chair. Demand again to see the holder of sadism and the person will move their hand to some sort of lever. Do not release them as they pull it. Do not release them as the floor vanishes from under you and you fall into it. You will need them to advance. It will seem as if you are falling for a very long time, but do not release the clerk at any moment during this time. You shall eventually land upon a ground covered in metallic thorns. These will dig into your skin, starting the pain you will experience in this realm. You must not ignore the pain, but let it be known. The floor of the entire realm is covered in various and painful objects. Metallic thorns, burning coals instantly followed by shallow water that seems filled with piranhas, followed by an icy area that will no doubt freeze your tortured feet and perhaps give them frostbite if you cannot move through it quick enough. Not many seem to make it through this before their feet give out. But you must, and you must force the clerk to come with you. Take joy in the pain that they take, every agonizing step of the way. You will reach a door that has an electrical charge. Make the clerk open it and continue on to the next painful trial. This will consist of whatever you fear the most, what would torture you the most to go through, and it is all right to show this fear, this pain. It delights the holder of sadism. So, do not deny it or appear to act brave. You have faced many horrors by now that I am sure death is not your greatest fear. If it is, then rejoice. Your death will be swift. If it is not, however, you will have to deal with this torture, with the clerk taking delight in it. If this sadistic being does not enrage you as you suffer, then you will fail. If they do, and if you manage to curse them and yell that you would like to see them confronted with the worst torture imaginable, then your torture will end, and theirs shall begin. You must not show even a hint of compassion. Do not let your heart be softened by their pleas for mercy. Instead, after a few minutes of this, you must demand that their torment be worse, that this could not possibly be the worst torture possible. If you are convincing, the holder of sadism will walk into the room. Do not be deceived by her appearance, for although it seems mild and weak, her red dress was not always red. She will ask you a simple question. What would be appropriate? If you answer anything besides hopelessness, then you will experience what you said for all eternity and become well acquainted with the feeling of hopelessness. This answer will intrigue the holder of sadism. She will speak again and ask, How does one take away hope? But you must not answer this. You must tell her in return that if she does not know, she is not worthy of her title as the holder of sadism. 
She will scream in a rage, and you will soon know the torture of all the torture devices known and unknown to man. You will be mentally, physically, and emotionally wounded. But now is the time when you cannot flinch. You must not let out a single cry. A single tear must not fall from your eyes. If you can manage to be strong in the face of all the torture she knows, then you will wake up in the place where you were born, clutching a dead dove. The dove is the sign of hope, the caged bird that never seems to die, but as you can clearly see, it has. The dead dove is object 366 of 538. Are you sadistic enough to let the world know hopelessness?